Cool. But let us return and begin again as we return to our what is supposed to be our Rise of the Drow campaign that we got pulled off into a little side quest there for the last uh, last few months. The Taywall campaign by choice, and knowing that your player characters would not have a lot of time in the summer lands. You took a little bit of time there in your downtime to actually travel and then come back. And then just when you finally got yourselves recommitted to the task and agreed to travel with your friend Maya of Embla, who is one of the uh, one of the ambassadors from from Embla, the Dwarven Dwarven Kingdom nearby, of which you know there are two Dwarven Kingdoms, Embla and Stonehome being its uh, sister kingdom, which is a little bit further to the north down below. Those are the last two vestiges of civilization that separates uh, Rybalka and what remnants, remnants of humanity and faith that exists in the often frozen world of Rybalka above between them and the dark lands below where the drow and the other creatures of the night subsist and plot and go about their evil machinations. You awaken in the Galekin estate fully sleeping for the first time since the beginning of your ordeal. You find yourself sitting upright, shocked in bed as the Galekins try to tell you that Yes, in an entire 12 passings of the moon have come and gone since you last came through these dark wood. And I tell you now that it is Kuthona of the very next year, 4722. And your mind races as you try to put these numbers together. Well, at least the, the humans in the room. Ingrid's fairly upset over it. Lucien and uh, Lucien seems a bit nonplussed about it, and just another year is like a blinking of an eye. No, he's not at all surprised. Time can pass in a, in the Fey realm, completely uh, incongruous to to norm, to uh, reality. He's experienced that before. And the Galekins kind of nod and grimly speak of ancient tales of floating lanterns in the woods that would at times lead travelers astray off the beaten paths and into the shadowy folds of the dark trees and the dancing things that exist beyond. But perhaps you should count yourselves lucky that indeed Despite a year's time being taken from you in the blink of an eye, you were at least allowed to return to this realm rather than staying there forever while all that you know or did know turned to dust. And at this, Ingrid becomes upset. Oh, it's been a year I've been away from my, my poor husband. I must return to Rybalka and check on him. And she bursts out. Maya himself seems a little upset by it. But the conflict in Embla, surely it has grown in my absence. Uh, friends, please, I understand your need to continue on to Adric's folly, but I, I will follow the more direct path to the keep and meet you there. I must learn what I can of relations between Embla in the cities above. What of the Beartooth? Did he ever emerge from Adric's Folly? Um, the Galekins lower their head and they say, no, we have no further news of, of poor Kual and what became of him. Um, we do not venture into the keep. And 
all trade routes from Embla seem to have uh, dwindled and become unsafe in the past year. We do what we can to keep our stocks full by hunting and and gardening here and of course trading with the fishermen of Rybalka but we have no further news of how the conflict below proceeds but the lack of news at this time portends of grim things indeed so Ingri and uh Maya are going to, to head out um, and they will agree to meet up with you as you get closer to the keep but Ingri wants to return to Rybalka uh, to check on her family and Maya uh, wants to begin learning everything he can about the trade routes and whatever has gone on with Embla so he will update you upon your return So you find yourselves reunited with your companion, Methander, who disappeared, scouting ahead in the woods as you all wandered from the path, now thinking back about it upon the events. Perhaps you would have been right to ignore it to begin with. <laughs> and continue on. So, what do you guys, uh, so Mythander, what do you say to your companions now that you've, you've found them and uh, they are no longer missing and or dead after one year? These guys, where have you been? I have been looking everywhere for you. It's trapped in the shadow pocket of a fey realm. It was my fault. Yeah, I was okay. That would explain a lot. Obvious, a, an obvious ruse, and I went towards it. Curious. I take the blame. At least you're still alive. Many of the others were thinking you were dead. I spent a whole year searching for you. Only a day passed while we were there. There was a lot more time here. Such is the gulf between realities. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Lucien? I'm glad that you're safe and sound. It's good to be back. Lucien, I owe you an apology. Uh, poor. For suggesting we follow the cries in the woods. Ah, uh, it was a good trick. I appreciate good tricks. That it was. It was a good trick. But There's I did no say, I did say, hmm, it's not good, Al, but we had no choice with the wooden tree being <clears throat> chasing us and stalking us. And would we have been able to look ourselves in the eye, having ignored it? Even despite the fact that we all sort of did know it was a trick. I won't blame myself any further, but you have my apologies. <clears throat> so well, it's important enough that you learn from your mistakes. Next yes. time, wiser. <laughs> yes, next time, the baby in the woods can rot, for all I fucking care. <laughs> Ooh, I like this new one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little overdramatic. You're, you're, more, you're much more fun than the old one. <laughs> That's, <laughs> old That's the lesson I took from that, yes, was that. The cries for help in the woods, they can go unheeded. Especially these devil-haunted woods. So the question is, what do we do now? Do we go on to... Have to I wonder if the drow have made themselves known more in this area. I think by the time... I think by the time uh, Ingri catches up with her family and is ready to travel again. We could have explored Adric's Folly and been back to town to meet up with uh, her and Maya. Oh. 
of course, but I still wonder if they have plundered, enslaved, <clears throat> the things that they tend to do. I wonder. We found, we shall see them. I think there was they the... Haven't uh... been, they haven't returned to the surface yet. Uh, I'm sorry. They haven't returned to the surface yet. So, quiet for now. There was talk of the two-headed giant, though. Does that still hold sway in Adric's Folly? Do you know? I do not know of such things. Yeah, according to the the Galekins, uh, the Etten is still in in Adric's Folly, as far as you know. No one has undertaken any expeditions to like drive it out or anything. They've just kind of left it where where it is. You're not curious about that place, Lucian? Well, we can oh we can easily go there. I'm always curious. I was just wondering if they had shown they've been plundering, deceiving, and doing, you know, drow things in our one year absence. Or if they're still hiding on the ground, skulking like they normally do. The Gale can say, uh, no, surprisingly, the uh, we've heard nothing further of the drows, as though uh, whatever part that Rybalka played in this, the grand scheme of events to come, has either already done or has yet to begin. We're more well, concerned for the, the state of revolt. what happens below. I think the only thing that Rybalkan was uh, suppo was in the story was the artifact they were guarding. Oh yes, we heard something about that. Some kind of uh, sacred crystal or something or other that the high priest used to keep safe. Yeah. Some kind of ancient relic. Well, it's too bad we don't know more about it. Hmm. Yes, too bad. The ga <laughs> the Galekins the Galekins provide you with uh, with food, and milk, and honey, and fresh vegetables, fresh baked bread, bits of meat. Make sure you're fully fed and rested before you set out the next day. And as you're discussing it amongst yourselves. <clears throat> You walk to the edge of their estate, out past the, the small wall that borders their, their home. And uh, you hear uh, a small voice coming off uh, from the trees nearby, speaking to you, Snorri. And it says, uh, uh, you, you always did fall for the easy tricks. <laughs> and you turn and you see... Uh, the, the leafy visage of uh, your one-time friend, Trialia the Fairy, whom you've, uh, who you met in the Darkwood some time ago in your youth. Well, fortunately for you, I was able to leave enough breadcrumbs just to get you out of there. You should have heard what they were talking about doing to you for the next hundred years. I can imagine. Well, let this be a lesson to you. The next time you kill a dryad, be a little bit more careful how you talk about her when you pass her treat. I think you got a lot of the fae here stirred up. Or it could just the... be the Lantern King up to his old tricks. I'm not sure what part he plays. but uh... I'm playing over that encounter in my mind, and then the dryad left us little choice. In fact, we tried not to kill her. So perhaps you should, um, perhaps you should um, speak more of what you know instead of what you heard. You weren't there. If you were there, you would know. Well, how do you know I wasn't there the whole time? Besides, and because you, because your ignorance of the situation. What's a is, little is clear. What's a little blood to a life that could have been saved, but. Well, at least you're talking truthfully for the first time. Hmm. That's good. Well, 
I just came to warn you, let you know, there are definitely dark things and evil things lurking about the woods. Make sure you stay and to it, the trails. Noted. And uh, not for nothing, I do thank you. It was a lesson clearly bought and, and dearly bought. Don't be such a stranger next time you come, come through. You could have asked me for help. You know. When I emerged from the woods the first time, it was like a, I had walked through a mist, could not remember, did not know how I came upon my magic, could not remember your name. Now it's come to me. Yo, you underestimate your effect on the mortal mind. You fay. Ah, uh, well, that or you mortals have a way of forgetting things. But, anyway. Be Does careful. The drugs. Don't be a stranger. And she, I won't. She heads back into the woods. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so you so, guys, um, you had originally planned to continue <clears throat> uh, up to Adric's Folly just to ostensibly to explore it because when you left uh, like all of the drow kind of chased you out of it and it was left abandoned so it's essentially sitting the way it was left with um, the exception of what um, the Etten may have done mm -hmm. and we have to account that uh, Ingrid's probably going to want to catch up with her family for a little bit so we're not going to go anywhere without her Oh, she can catch up. We can go explore that. Wouldn't you like to do that? Because, I would. I would. Uh, so let's curious. explore it. We won't go underground, but we can explore that at least. Would, why not go underground? Why not use our secret knowledge that we have? The tunnel. We're the only oh, ones that know of it. Underground to the drow. Oh, uh, Adric's follow you, of course, yes. Yeah. Yes, of course we use that entrance. And maybe we can open up that... Uh, that locked door now with more skill than yes so exactly precisely I'm curious about many things and plus we do owe it to the bear tooth to at least look for him despite it being a whole year the chances of him living are remote but he did help us once nah that's true Okay, I moved you guys over we... to uh, the Serpent Lake region map there, so just let that uh, load up so you can get a better idea. Mm-hmm. Got it. It's a nice map. I see, Snorri, you're traveling lightly. What happened to all your stuff? The confounded fate took everything that I owned. Ed's? Greedy. Yeah, it is. It is. Like I say, uh, Miss Andy, it was a lesson uh, clear, dearly bought. Hmm. The fair are not to be trifled with. I understand that. <sighs> the powers are far beyond that of us mortals. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a reset there. So now you know the time frames that have passed. Um, you know that uh, essentially the, the things in the woods have just kind of just gotten worse. And whatever's going on down below has obviously worsened in this time. But also to uh, reset and just remind... Um, Snorri, he had a uh, fairy contact that we had rolled up all the way back when we did session zero. So I thought <laughs> now would be a good time yeah. actually to do that. It's a little tiny reminder because um, it's something I was always kind of waiting for him to call upon during one of these dark wood encounters. And it just never happened. But uh, I totally forgotten about it. <clears throat> yeah, but but that gives you guys just a little bit of a recess. So now, you know, you know, time has passed. Things have have gotten worse here and there and uh, you're kind of back on the road and you can also think about all of the 
things that have been happening kind of like in the grander scale. Like you find yourselves in, involved in something involving these higher powers, however it is that you interpret that, whether you see yourself as a part of uh, one of the pawns on a chessboard or one of the players at the board, or uh, if you see it as something um, entirely different. So those are kind of the thoughts that kind of sink in and seep in and make their way down deeper into your being. So here at the Serpent Lake map, um, you can see the greater Darkwood area as you kind of tick forward. Adric's Folly is going to be all the way up where I moved uh, Munir to right now, okay? Mm -hmm. um, in order for you to to uh, to take the road to Embla, you need to journey all the way essentially to the opposite side of the range over there. Um, to go to uh, Krelgar's Keep and to take the uh, the road below. Okay, so that's where you are. So you're all the way back here at uh, at the Galekin Estate, and uh, you need to go up a couple couple ticks to uh, Adrix, and you need to wind up at Krelgar Keep. Yeah. So the long and the short of it, if we do, if we went straight across, it wouldn't be that much out of our way. Yeah, so we're not, it's not like we're going um, to Mortar Island or something like that. All right. <laughs> we need to okay. kill a little bit of time till Ingrid returns. We do. We do. We can't do it without her. <clears throat> so this is a good time for you guys to uh, just drop in a little bit of, of role play from your characters. If there's any kind of uh, insight that you want to share or just catching up that you want to do insert role play now yeah the uh the whole year uh, overnight has completely caught up to snorri his um he's basically aged a whole year overnight his hair has grown like a whole year's worth overnight um whether it was the actual uh shock of the occurrence or Maybe he's just gray early, but his hair is gray now. It's like long and scraggly and gray. And uh, whereas before, where he would he would chop it short with his knife, he doesn't care now. Uh, he just um, he talks to Muneer in the morning, and uh, he walks around gripping the sword that he has. And he's up. Uh, he's kind of brooding and quiet now. Whereas before, he was more pleasant and. He's worried more about everybody else than himself. Uh, now he's more introverted. He only talks when someone's addressed him. Uh, that kind of thing. Fella, like you name wrestling. <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> wrestling. Wrestling is it, is it? Is it wrestling? Is yeah, wrestling. Okay, yeah. this one's the red then. <laughs> I'm the kid. <laughs> it's, it's actually, um, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, do you, have you ever, do you ever read the Elric stories? I have them. I haven't read them. Yeah, it's more like Elric. Than, okay. Yeah. It's very Elric, yes. It's it's a little too Elric. We'll try not to do that. <laughs> well, we don't know. <laughs> I haven't read it. <laughs> I have read them, too. <laughs> Hey, use it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always interesting to see these kind of changes come out organically. Because normally you would have the Elric type character from character creation. You know, it's not really born out of out of the character. But um, that's one of the fun things about that kind of anything goes mentality of, of the earlier editions because you run into something like a deck of many things which is a powerful artifact and a lot of DMs consider those campaign killers because essentially you know the possibilities are unlimited as to what can happen both good and bad in the campaign uh, I know back in the day that we, we used a, uh, a deck of many things a couple times and bad things happen and good things happen I think I actually drew the talons like Snorri did at one point <laughs> lost all my stuff, yeah, at one point. But then he also got, like, the keep and a couple other good ones. But, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, the um, see, Snowy's not even blaming it on the deck. I mean, there was right. cards involved and stuff. He's blaming it on the Fey. Sure. He's uh, everything that's happened. Um, he he doesn't really consider even the first one anything that's even happened to him, like the the alignment change. Mm -hmm. Really didn't even register. The uh, the second one where he got the service of a fourth level fighter, he just kind of considered that somehow with pulling the card, he had somehow freed the man from a magical prison. That was that was his kind of take on things. And then when right. um, he picked up the last card, he just kind of figured that was his punishment for uh, killing the Fey of that realm when he lost all his stuff. It wasn't wasn't the card so much. It was blaming on the Fey. Yep, those tricksy tricksy Fey's. Which is uh, right it right up the alley of my backstory. That's uh, how I came to be a wizard and a shaman. Is the Fey. Messing with powers that we should be messing with, Lucian. Okay, so you guys are going to be joined by your, joined by your I friend saw... Wolf as well. Wolf, told you they were a life of Wolf. You wouldn't listen. <laughs> ah, it's so good to see you alive, friend Snorri. But you've changed. Seems as though you've so... aged a hundred years. <laughs> uh, or one. It's, 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 it's good. It could be an eon. I don't know how long, how much time has passed. The Gilkins say it was a year. To us, it was only one day, one day and one night. We awoke. We uh, we climbed up through the uh, through the Fey Realm, back to the well, and you were there waiting for us overnight, like we expected you to, friends. Friends would always look for friends. We had no idea that a whole year had passed, but I'm not shocked. Not shocked to find to learn that at all. As a youth, I lost several years in these woods. I can't. I can't put my finger on what happened. Too much drugs. Could mm. be. Could be. Yes. I could have I fell under the sway of that dryad that we killed years back. Don't know. You never know. The Fae will steal your memories, they'll steal your uh, your thoughts, your emotions, things you hold dear. They'll take anything, use it for their own their own satisfactions. Yes, there are many many Fae about, my friend. That is why I try to leave them lots of gifts so they leave me alone. <laughs> the wise thing to do. But, uh, Wolf, we are headed to Adric's Folly. We are investigating um, the disappearance of a friend, although it's been over a year. I do not expect to find him alive. But uh, Lucian and I are very curious about several things that we didn't get a chance to investigate. Aye. And it's on the way. Aye, he's still alive in that cursed place. You hear him from time to time. He comes out to the courtyard of the battlements and howls. An unearthly howl from the depths of his soul. I always told that bastard not to go into the place it's been haunted since the time of Adric's fall. That he'd never listen. <clears throat> Will you join us in seeing him free? Aye, that is why I'm walking with you. Come, this way. All right. This is all your uh, talking while we walk segment. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> walk and talk, basically. So, Snorri, uh, when, since you last, uh, lost all your things, you may use one of these. I hand Snorri two vials of potions. Ah, excellent. Snorri will... Uh... Thank you. Thank you, Mithendir. I, uh, I will identify those. Where are we here?
Ash detect magic and uh, identify those babies. It's nice to have the magic at our fingertips again, isn't it, Lucian? You just, Especially... you just think about it and it works. It's nice. <laughs> it was, even though it was fun to see what ill effect would happen, but most of it wasn't horrible. I expected oh. more. Quite a bit to our benefit. Long spells, yeah. You know, like more terminal type of things, but <laughs> nice tricks, and I appreciate good tricks. So check out those two potions and add them to my uh, sheet. One potion of fox cunning and one potion of old's wisdom. Ah, nice. Thank you. And they're they're good for just overnight, or are they just uh, are they. They potions. indefinite. They're potions, potions. Okay. Potions, potions. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I've got to grab uh, grab a book. I'll be right back. You guys just commiserate. So, Sandy, did you miss us? Did you think us dead? <laughs> I thought of you as dead. I just... Uh... Well, I spent the whole year gather, uh, searching the woods or gathering g components for scrying spells for Yuri. I spent almost uh, the whole year in Yuri's library looking for another spell to search for you. There are things I saw that can't be unseen. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, no, I was always in good hope to find you someday, which we did. It is, uh, it's good to be out of that place. It was, uh, there was a moment or two when I didn't think we were going to emerge. So you do you still have those cards? No, we left the cards. They were. If you picked them up, they would have been bad. You couldn't handle it's, them. It's a shame. Some things are not meant to come out of that uh, that place. Yeah, maybe it's for the better. We learned now that curiosity can be very, very bad. Ah, but Ingrid had the luck of the gods on her side. Mm. She became very vastly powerful he already was very very powerful even more so now she could kill a dinosaur with her fists how much <laughs> more powerful does she need to be <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> actually i remember her <laughs> ripping spine <laughs> of a dinosaur yes so she went up a level. I'm going. I'm metagaming uh, right now. <laughs> two levels. Yeah, went up two levels. She went up two levels. <laughs> two levels. Thing, it went up two levels. <laughs> like I say, at three levels, we'll have caught her. We'll all be on the same level. So it's not that not that big of a deal, but yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so you guys uh, know that you will pass the chapel. I learned some new tricks for her. Did you? What did you learn? Oh. Uh, I could show you, but I, ra I would rather surprise her. Surprise her then. How are uh, paired up with the right how, are, how are things in uh, Rebelka? Same old, I guess. People are still fishing and uh, what's the word for that? Passing the time. Yes. A 
All it takes is one experience like ours to teach us the meaning of time. Uh, uh, time is a curious thing. Also, I figure when we go underground, I can cast those spells again. We can, you know, go invisible and I can cast Cloak of Secrets to cover ourselves. If we should will. Unless we just want to walk in bold like. But we have that option. Now let's go through the tunnel. When we get there. Yeah, I'm talking about through, talking about through the tunnel. Yeah. You remember the last it's time like I went in? As a group, I had, <laughs> you had to like... Uh, he says, go through the tunnel invisible is what he's saying. <laughs> no, 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 not even the tunnel. I was talking about once you get to the door. Once but we get out the other side. Well, we don't even know if anything's down there, so hey. Yeah, exactly. In terms of, honestly. Yeah. That's a very good point. You pass the the chapel of Flesuros, as it is known amongst the uh, Clavecian locals, on the way to the old castle. Of course, you know that the uh, secret entrance into the tunnel uh, leads through the, the mausoleum below the little graveyard behind the chapel there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is one option you have of entering Adric's Folly. The other being, of course, you can just go up to the the gate or any other section of the wall as you will <laughs> and enter it the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's up to you guys. Let's investigate the uh, the church first. Make sure everything's... Famous last word. What could go wrong? What could, what could possibly be wrong in the church? No, I mean uh, in the in Edric's fall. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's a it's a risk, but yeah, it's the adventure's life for us. I was assuming there there was enough adventure the last year you spent, or the last day you spent. Okay, so from the chapel, you can actually uh, overlook Adric's Folly to a certain extent, um, or look up to it, rather, because Adric's Folly is built on the top of a large, flat hillock in the foothills there, giving it visibility for miles over the lightly wooded rolling landscape around it. At one time, it was completely surrounded by the trees, but over... Uh, after the fall of the castle, all of that was burned and cleared away. There's a small chapel dedicated to light and life and uh, the more friendly elder gods and spirits. It overlooks a large graveyard marked with tombstones. There are also uh, a few mass graves out further back. It's long since abandoned. Most of the, the local Vic Mortier Arcadians avoid it, thinking it is haunted as the as the keep itself. But much like uh, the previous time that you visited the chapel, you find it calm and peaceful here. Your thoughts uh, pleasantly lifted from the more uh, worrying matters that you had in your mind, at least for the time that you're within its walls. Do we get there like late, late, late in the day or is it? Uh... Yeah, so it's like the sun is going down at this point. It's like an all day trek to get over here. Adventure time. So you're good in terms of yeah. uh, supplies and whatever. I mean, you have plenty of food coming from. Yeah. From the what do we? Uh, what do we do? A little foray in there, and then um, <clears throat> we'll see what we come upon. We can always. Uh, re I think we can always come back here and retreat and rest. 
if we need to. Let's start the adventure, though. All right. Snorri starts casting his uh, protective wards and spells. Ooh, that's a stinky one. That's my false life. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll get my, um, my mage armor going. Any other in my dark vision? All my uh, my long term spells here. Let's see here, dark vision. He, he's got to do lots of buffing now. For yeah. <laughs> make up for all that stuff he lost. Uh, at least he didn't have the thing that made it that no magical item would work on you forever. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, at least been, that was it. it <laughs> so, so it could have been worse. Always look on the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not complaining. If uh, I think actually I came out ahead, believe it or not. I do like that big sword that you just kind of drag around behind you, though. You should let a a real man swing that thing a bit. He kind of like <laughs> well, reaches out for your sword. Yeah. Snorri just kind of steps back. Oh. You do you do well not to touch a wizard's bonded item, Wolf. Bonded item? Yes, I've uh, infused a portion of my soul into this sword. That's about as useful as a chastity belt on the high priest. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Ah, well, I'll show you how a real man swings a sword and he pulls out his, <laughs> his grook and crook, his two short swords. Uh, if I ever need anything to pick my teeth with, I will, uh, I'll ask you to borrow one of those. Just remember, it's not how long the blade is, but where you stab it in the end. Well, don't stab me in the end. He swishes his swords in the air around <laughs> you. <laughs> hey, I'm in the middle. Let me out of this. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you're done with your pissing contest, Wolf, perhaps uh, join me in uh, going down through the mausoleum. Let's make our way. So you make your way to the secret passage, which is a hidden chamber beneath the graveyard. You can tell it was a sepulcher for the craftsman and his workers who were once entombed here. Last time you came through, you found that some of the dead were still walking about, but you uh, helped them depart from this mortal realm, as they like to say. All right. Uh, any sign of any of that sort of activity? No, it's pretty much, uh, it looks like, uh, you know, the way you guys left it, you know, the footprints are pretty well preserved of all of the uh, Rybalkans fleeing the fleeing through the tunnel and it's just kind of gathered dust since then okay just the odd occasional you know vermin track here and there uh, go down the uh, the tunnel the old fashioned way I don't know where you guys are going to pop up on this thing Uh, I can't tell what you see. Uh, do you guys see anything? It's all black right now. All black. I shrunk it and tried to look around the whole thing, but we haven't, yeah. like, we haven't appeared. Ditto. Okay, I must have said it that way. All right. Yeah. 
to the spec. <laughs> okay, so you should be oh. able to see the tunnel now. Okay. Mm, yep, there we go. This is a big map. This is the one that, that essentially broke my dynamic lighting. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right, too. It just had so much stuff on it. It just was completely overloaded. And so I've had to switch to playing old Fog of War ever since. Um, but, uh, okay, so I wasn't sure which way you guys were going to come in. So you know the hall is ahead of you. On the other side, relatively quiet as you come through. As soon as we get to this area here, I'm going to cast uh, Bark Skin and uh, Resist Energy Fire. My other two long lasting spells. And um, for some reason, I can't access my mini. does that it's like uh, every time I change boards with you guys let me try to pull you back on here manually again see if you can move that guy neither one It is nope. not accepting that as your token for some reason. Okay. You didn't change it to the new Elric. Well, there we go. Should there we go. Have. Okay, cool. Got it. No, do you, uh, you have a new mini for it? I have the I have the picture for it. It's in um it's in the role play up. It's the second one of you. Yeah. <laughs> Illusion. <laughs> there, where is it? I see the portrait. Uh, you've got the portrait set on your character sheet. Yeah, uh, that many works for uh, for that look too. I mean, it's always been kind of a dark looking figure, so it kind of it works for yeah, that's fine. Whichever direction you go with it. Unless we find you like a wizard with a sword, that would be cool. Okay, so um, I think I opened up most of the stuff that you saw in the hallway. You might have opened a few of the doors, but some of them you didn't completely check out. I think you did go through this one. It's like a chemistry room. Yeah. There were some haunts. Um, you went through. I think you found the well. Okay. Yeah, I think it was this one. Wasn't it this one we didn't get, we tried to get in? It was either that one or this one. It was this one that I couldn't like. The, uh, yeah, I couldn't unlock. Take the lock and it wouldn't let us, if I remember correctly. It yeah. Let me. Broke your picks or something, didn't it? Well, it didn't, it said whatever if I kept trying. Yeah, let's go. Let's go try that one out. If I remember correctly. I think it was that one. Hi. Right. Shall we? <laughs> is it... Miss Andy, is that door? Is it locked? No, he'll kind of poke his head down not. the hallway. <laughs> <It's> not. <laughs> I'm assuming it was open. Yeah. It was unlocked. Yeah, it's whatever state you guys left it in. Imagine you closed it behind you. Oh, okay. Okay. So roll uh, perception just to see if we hear anything or. No, it's quiet. Um... Okay. Okay. So let's start heading. So when I walk up to the 
door here. I'm assuming is this was this the door that was that we couldn't get through before. Yes, I believe that was one of them. Okay. Uh, so make sure I detect magic. No magic. Any magic on the door? No magic on the door, and uh, the walls are too thick to detect anything beyond. Okay. Make sure I don't detect. They haven't trapped it. So, 20 is 32. Any traps on the door? It's a plus four for trap finding. It is not trapped, um, but it is locked. It's a very nice lock. Yes, if I remember. Disable device, let's see where we are. Ooh, this should help. So, um, while Lucian's working on the door, Snorri draws the sword, and Mithandir gets his first real look at it. It's about, the blade's about five feet long, the, the handle's about another foot or so, it's got a big cross guard, and the metal is, uh, jet black. It's jet black, glossy metal, and there's, um, a bunch of uh, slightly glowing red loop runes carving all the way up the blade. 36. 36. Okay, you pop it right open. Pink, pink. Ah, my skills have gotten better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we find. So he uh, op uh, opened the door. Lucien opens slowly opens the door okay so you reveal what was obviously at one time one time a vault of some sort uh, there's a pile of coins there you are detecting magic um, Ooh, okay from <laughs> something in the coins and then something uh, in the chest there okay so um, I'm a I said there's magic in to, in the coins and in the chest so I but then right back in just this, say, this entrance area here, right? Just in the coins itself and That's in the correct. chest itself. That's correct. Okay. So he goes up to the coin and, you know, he's going to wait the rounds to see what he detects before <clears throat> cursing himself. So it looks like there's <laughs> a magic javelin right there in the pile. Oh, okay. And ah. you make your way to the chest. Uh, there's a couple potions there that you're detecting. Okay. So he picks up the javelin and goes... I think you could use this one, couldn't you? S Snorri. Ah. Uh, you can see Snorri is fondling his sword. I can't use the javelin, really. It's not mine. Like... Uh... I'll let you identify it while I grab the potions. Yes, yeah. Anybody can use javelins. It's a simple uh -huh. weapon. You can identify it while I grab the potions. There are potions of... see you said two of them right yes he's probably at the point he auto identifies them with his yeah spellcraft or perception who me if I take 10 be 20 yeah so would that be automatic so there are two potions of cure serious wounds And Snorri, it is a plus one returning javelin. Oh, nice. We don't want it. No one here. We can always save it for angry. It might be good for Wolf as well. <clears throat> Aye, well, I have my trusty bow. I just never seem to hit much of anything with it. Maybe a throwing arm would be better. Ah, and so the coins, he goes, I, I guess we gather the coins. Yes. It's a, so it's, idea. A, it's a huge pile of coins. <laughs> we'll gather how many we can. <laughs> I have a handy half a sack. <laughs> um, just pick out the platinum. <laughs> it is 9,484 wow. silver pieces. Yeah. 
one thousand pieces into it, and Wolf is like, "How long are we going to do this?" <laughs> <laughs> As long as it takes. <laughs> yeah, we can now. Uh... <laughs> we shovel in what we carry and then we'll move on. We'll come back before we leave. So how long do you guys spend uh, actually loading up coins? Because that will affect your buffs and whatnot. Yeah. Like, okay. not, not more than five, ten minutes. Okay. Ha! We should just put me here when we go to the. <laughs> He's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Yes, that's all we need. Five or ten minutes. Uh huh. <laughs> well, we can collect it all if you want, and we can go back now and come back tomorrow. Okay, so uh, shall we go further? I think we should. So he goes over to this one. This I'll one, stop. I think that is this is this door here locked. Uh, as you walk up to it, you hear what sounds like voices coming from the other side. So he puts his hand up and go, indicating people seen, beyond it. You hear? Seen, do, do you remember the haunt? Yeah. So, shall we go this way? I think we should. Or the other. I think the stairs and the other one went upstairs, didn't it? Or both of them did, actually. They both did, yes, yes. I yeah. think we'll, I think we'll find the bed. There was the, the kitchen, wasn't it? The kitchen was on the other end. So we want to go through and end up in the kitchen or in the main, that one room? That's the question. Yeah, I don't remember. So. Let's go. Uh, I guess there'd be less chance of catching people not in the kitchen, huh? Yeah, one was a storeroom, if you recall correctly. Yeah, this storeroom, was, this was a storeroom here. Yeah. So, uh, he goes up to the very top. Lucian does, and he does perception, see if he hears anything. Beyond 29. Uh, it seems pretty quiet. Okay. Is it locked? It is not locked. Okay, so he open he peeks opens and peeks to see if he sees anything first. It is dark. Okay. So he goes up. To the, I guess the first floor, the upper floor. Okay. Let me orient you guys on the map here. And I'm assuming you are close that door back so they won't know we were here. Yes. <laughs> and lock it. We'll close it and lock it. So no one takes our gold or no silver. Okay. Open this up for you. There you go. See if you can find yourselves there on the upper mm -hmm. upper level. If I remember correctly, this yeah, he's whispering. Was an adjoining room. This was the hall. So he rolls. He comes over here, rolls perception again to see if he hears anything. Seems fairly quiet at the moment. Of course, for that role. <laughs> <laughs> he tried the connecting room before the hallway first, I guess. This one. Tried that one first. Is it the pier locked? It's not locked. Or is it locked? Okay, so he open he peeks open. You see, slowly. And <laughs> yeah, it appears to be uh, an old storage room, but it's been uh, peeked through at the moment, so it's empty chests. Come on, this one here or the open crates joining? in both of them? They're all storage rooms. Oh, okay. 
you talking about this room here? There might be like a, a few remnants of supplies left behind, like a bent shovel or broken okay. rake or something. Alright, so he goes to this one then for the hallway. I remember that being the hallway. You yeah, know, both, both rooms there are storage rooms, so it's the same. So empty, it's been so, picked, uh, picked I through. Remember it wrong. I thought these were hall. The hallway. Yeah. yeah, those are halls in the hallway, but I'm talking about the adjoining room. Yeah. Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. He opens the door to the hallway, peeks through. Uh, the darn fog of war is so light on mine, I can I can barely see what you guys can see. I'm trying to get to the corner here and peek around it. Okay. I'll just go ahead and open up a large section of it here. Uh, so, going through these series of old storerooms and whatnot, they've all been ransacked whenever either the drow evacuated or their Vic Morty or allies left the place, and then whatever's come through and picked it clean in the meantime. Okay. Hmm. I remember going down this hall, so maybe we should go down this one. We didn't really hit that area, if I remember correctly. Shall we go down this way? Yes. Let's go check it out. Shall we go pick around this corner? Okay, so you go from what appears to be storage rooms to more like parlor rooms and what might have been offices at one time. Try this door here. Percy listens to make sure. So. Yeah, the hallways are still uh, fairly dusty. Okay. <sighs> so, he, does he hear anything out of this this one here? Or anything anywhere. Uh, it is 17. quiet. The room, the door is not locked. Okay, so he opens and peeks through. Small room is a little yeah. more than a large closet for a dusty though elaborate suit of armor standing in the corner. He goes ooh and. He says, standing in the corner. He sees he detects magic from the armor. As you cast your spell upon it, it it rises from its stand and Horse. flashes <laughs> with a ghostly visage. A, a blade draws itself, and you hear a whisper, Leave my castle at once, fiend. So Lucian finally closes the door back. Okay. And closes the door. <laughs> we shall leave. Um, magic armor may be coming to fight us. Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> Can I make uh, an arcana check? If it's an animated set of armor? You can. Might not be pertinent, but... Might be something completely different. It might be a ghost or something like that, but based on a magic set of armor coming to attack us, I'm tell you all I know about animated armor. It would be what Nas Arcana, right? I think so, yeah. I get a little 
be a little high. Oops. Nah, I don't know anything about that armor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Snorri, so you don't think it's a magic suit of armor, but you do think it's a magic sword. It's just a person in the armor. Okay. Long sword, short sword, great sword. Long sword. Bastard sword, long sword. I know we can't see that, but it's like, what? <laughs> well, you did see it. I had a handout for it at one point. Oh, you did? From the past? In the, in the, the for previous adventure, you mean? Yeah, here it is. That's the good and bad of having all your handouts ready, is that there's a lot of handouts to go through. See if that pops up for you. Did that picture come through for anybody? It didn't come through on my end. Uh-oh. I may have dropped connection. In that case, we will suspend this momentarily. <laughs> 